Hi, I'm Roger Mealy from TheRacersResource.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about data acquisition. You know, computer prices have come down in recent years, and that's the same for data acquisition too. It's probably more affordable for the short track team than it ever has been in the past. This is the data acquisition system that we'll be using on our Project Dirt Lake model here on the Racers Resource. Now this is the Datamite 3 USB system from Performance Trends. We've got a lot of tests lined up already, actually about 14 different tests we've thought of so far. If you have anything you'd like to see us test, send it off to us, we'll see what we can do. Uh, you'll be seeing these in videos and in articles in Short Track USA in times to come. Uh, when I was preparing to do this video, I went to John Block of AutoWare because John really has a good understanding of what a Short Track team needs. John's got you know, the experience from a lot of different angles. And the thing I really like about John too is, different than most engineers, John has actually driven race cars too. So not only does he know what the data is showing, but he knows what it should feel like in the car too. So I think that's a big plus. John's been a consultant and an engineer for everything from short track cars all the way up to Indy cars. The other thing I like too is that you know, he does design chassis setup software so he's got that angle of it too. So just you know, real good, well-rounded view of what data acquisition is. I asked John, okay, let's just do a simple explanation of what data acquisition really is. And I thought he had a really great explanation for this. It's basically just a collection of what is happening on a zero to five volt scale on any component of the car at any given time. So if you're taking 30 samples per second, then that's 30 different voltage levels per second that you're getting. Well, now the problem with that is, you know, uh, we can't really tell what to do with that. Well, then the software in the data acquisition takes that and converts it into something we humans can read. You know, like mile per hour, uh, lateral Gs, RPM, it converts it into those things, and then the software can take it and display it in different ways. Histograms, charts, spreadsheets, track maps, a lot of different things can be done with the data once you have it in there. The nice thing about that too is that sometimes you can take that same data, display it in a different format, and it actually makes more sense to you. It really starts to, to be easier to see what the data is doing. Now then, the Performance Trends data mite does all that in the software, and you can actually take it another step if you want to. They also make a uh, software that's called Suspension Analyzer. That's primarily for doing the geometry on the car. What you can do is take that data run, import it into Suspension Analyzer, and then you can actually animate that. You can actually see the chassis working. So it gives you a much better view of what is actually happening in much more visual terms. Now let's talk a little bit about what sensors you might need. Well, of course, you're gonna want shock sensors, at least four. Uh, if you're on a dirt car, you may want an extra one for your fifth coil or pull bar too. Uh, but at least four of the linear potentiometers for the shock sensors. You also want at least two axis accelerometers. You want one for fore aft and one for lateral. You also want some kind of speed sensing, which it can be either magnet system for the wheel speed or it can be GPS. That's what we'll be using on our system, which also allows us to do the track mapping too. And you're also going to want steering angle and throttle position too. And that'll give you just about everything you need to get a real good idea of what the car is doing. And you can do some driver analysis with that too. I tell you, with just a few sensors, it's really amazing the information you can get. If you have just lateral Gs, steering angle, and vehicle speed, you can do the math and actually back that out to find out what the tire slip angle is. There are cases, though, where two different types of sensors can still get the same data, but you know, one may have an advantage over the other. One of those is steering angle. Now, what we'll be doing on this car is we'll be using a linear potentiometer on the steering rack itself. And the reason for that is there's another way you can do it. It's called a string pot. And it's basically like a measuring tape. The string comes out, you wrap it around the uh, steering column and attach it so it can wind and unwind as you turn the wheel. Now the problem with that is that you can get extra noise, what is called noise, into the data. Noise in the data is basically anything that's happening showing up in the data that really shouldn't be there. And you know, with a string pot, especially on a dirt car, you can get debris hitting it that would cause the string to bounce, a vibration could cause it to bounce. Uh, on some sensors, even electrical interference can cause it. So you want to keep that data as clean as you possibly can. 
That's why we're using a linear potentiometer for our steering angle. I do have some suggestions on the rear of a dirt car, though, for your shock sensors. Uh, there are some things that you can do. Of course, we're on the right side now. The left side is really more important on this. Um, you want to get a sensor long enough to be able to read everything that's happening on the rear of the car. I know sometimes it may be tough to do that because they do go up in price quite a bit as you get longer in the travel. But I think it's the best thing to do. I mean, you could come down here and come off the uh, lower bar or a swing arm and do the math on it and you, you still have it. But the problem with that is with the bird cages indexing, you wouldn't be getting that extra travel and velocity figured into the data. So I suggest going with a long enough one to where you can mount it exactly parallel to the shock. Now, a term you'll see a lot in data acquisition is Hertz represented as HZ. And what that basically is, it's the sample rate. That is how many times you're recording data per second. So if you have a channel set to record at 10 hertz, it's going to take 10 readings broken out evenly over one second. Most of the things on the data are going to be set pretty low. Your channels for steering angle, brake pressure, throttle, all that's happening relatively slow. So you're only going to need about 5 to 10 hertz on those channels. Shock sensors, you're going to run in on up to maybe 100 hertz. And you always want to do your engine work at 100 hertz too. Now, if you're nervous about reading the data acquisition or actually, you know, installing it, anything of that nature, Performance Trends has a really good setup. They've got free email and phone support. They've also got a very detailed 212-page manual. Uh, that's, you know, it's not like you don't have to read the whole thing, but if you have a question come up, it's most likely in here. They also have a lot of great videos on the site to help you, too. Now, then if you want even more help beyond that, say if you want help just in reading the data, uh, or possibly just learning more about what you can do with data, then you can also go to John Block at autoware.com. He's got a new thing called off-site data acquisition where you can actually send your data to him, he'll analyze it, and call you back with what the results are for that. Of course, Performance Trends, as I said, you can get a hold of them at performancetrends.com. Now, we all love to hear from you. If you have any questions, go to the contact us page on theracersresource.com. Let me know. Thanks. See you again.